Lots of ways to get to Wrigley Field. You could have taken the bus today or maybe the L, or if they had watered the sidewalks, you could have ice skated here to the corner of Clark and Addison. It is a very cold night. Clear skies above. Winds blowing in again as the Cubs take on the Washington Nationals. It's WGN Sports on the U as the Cubs go for their fifth straight win. Hi again, everyone. Bob Brenly and Len Casper. Another cold one tonight. The Cubs won last night in extras in walk-off fashion. And as we look at the Cubs through 20 games, 10 up, 10 down, this team is getting a little bit better every day. A little bit better every day. The first 10 games of the season, not so good, especially offensively, especially in the bullpen. But over the last 10, things have started to round into form. This is a point of the season where the regular players are up around 70 or 75 ABs. You're starting pitchers four or five starts. You start to get a better feel for what this team is about. Carlos Zambrano was put in the bullpen to help stabilize a pretty young pen, and so far that has happened. Yeah, physically he's gone to the bullpen and done a nice job in the eighth inning, and also that pushes guys back into an earlier role in the ball game. where quite honestly that's probably where they're better suited at this stage of their career. You see the comparative numbers with Zambrano and without Zambrano in the pen. And that's the improvement from Menards. For all your home improvement needs, shop and save big money at Menards. The pitchers tonight love pitching on a night like this. LeVon Hernandez, his fastball couldn't hurt a flea, but he gets people out, and Tom Gorzolani should have a win. Yeah, he should have a win. He's pitched well enough to have a win. Took a no-hitter into the fifth inning against the Mets last time out, and LeVon Hernandez, being the crafty veteran he is, is going to take advantage of this cold, windy night here at Wrigley. So the right-hander Hernandez for the Nationals and the lefty Gorzolani for the Cubs. They hope to... Celebrate another win tonight. It would be five straight as they would get over 500 for the first time. Cubs baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. By Pepsi, every Pepsi refreshes the world. Submit your idea at refresheverything.com. And by Illinois Lottery's newest game, Powerball Wednesday and Saturday jackpots start at $20 million. Tonight's game is available in Spanish on your SAP audio setting provided by WRTO, La Tremenda Chicago Spanish language sports leader. Elio Benitez and Hector Fabregas have the call in Spanish tonight. Everybody is uh, bundled up. They've got the winter gear on here in late April as we check in on Jim Riggleman's Nationals lineup. They like to play small ball and run. Niger Morgan with good success against the Cubs. Desmond Guzman and Dunn, two through four. Willingham, Kennedy, Nieves, 
And you have Tavares and Hernandez. Let's check out how the Cubs take the field defensively tonight behind Tom Gorzolani. Brought to you by Pepsi. Every Pepsi refreshes the world. Soriano, Bird, and Fukudome across the outfield. Koske, last time he started a big day up in Milwaukee. Ramirez, Terry Fontenot, Lee across the infield. Giovanni Soto doing the catching tonight. Four left-hander, Tom Gorzolani. It's in his last outing against the Mets. He ended up taking the loss in what was a Cubs 5-2 defeat. He had a no-hitter through four and a third before the youngster Ike Davis singled into right field. Gave up two earned runs on four hits and two walks in that ball game. Struck out seven. Let's get the umpires. Michigan native Scott Barry will work the plate. The crew chief is Jerry Davis, Brian Knight, and Greg Gibson. At second and third, respectively, as Gorzolani deals Ball one to Niger Morgan, and we are underway. That's a called strike on a fastball at 88. Morgan's been in a hot stretch, two for five with a run in the opener. He has four consecutive games of at least two hits. Had one bunt base hit in the ball game last night. Attempted a second one. Fly ball to left. Soriano and Bird is going after it. It's going to actually split them both and roll all the way to the wall. And Morgan is going to stand at third. About Niger Morgan, not a guy who you'd expect to hit for power on a night like this, especially right into the teeth of the wind. But he hit it in a perfect spot, and he's at third with nobody out. Soriano rightfully playing very shallow out there in left field and over toward the third base line for Niger Morgan, and he basically just hit the ball over his head all the way to the wall. Bird had to come over from his center field position, and by the time the Cubs hustle it back to the infield, the speedy Morgan is standing on third base. See former Cubs minor league manager Pat Listash in the background. He's their third base coach. The corner men are in there. Back up the middle as Ian Gesman, the shortstop, takes ball one low in the dirt. Good block by Soto. Well, I'm shocked that ball carried as far as it did. The wind not blowing nearly as hard now as it was during batting practice earlier this afternoon, but Morgan is not the kind of guy that usually hits the ball over the heads of the outfielders, especially the opposite way. Swing and a miss to make it one and one. Has been also with a couple of hits last night. As the Nationals erased an early three to nothing deficit before losing 4 3 in 10. And a base hit to right as Morgan had to hold up to make sure it got down and then scored easily. And just like that, the Nationals grab a one to nothing lead. Clean single into right field. Looked like Kosuke Fukudome was winding up the throw to first base. Unfortunately, uh, Derek Lee wasn't on the bag. I don't think they would have had a chance to get Desmond to first base anyway, but Kosuke always thinking out there in right field. And you can see that sun shining in the face of Derek Lee and Ian Desmond as he takes his lead off first base. Won't be there long, but that's a battle for D. Lee right now on pickoff attempts. Christian Guzman, the switch hitting second baseman, takes a strike. This is the first time the Cubs have trailed, by my estimation, since Thursday in New York. We've been grabbing early leads during this winning streak. Runner going, and the throw is going to be late as Desmond almost overslid the bag. He actually took a look back at home plate and still got in rather easily. The second steal of the year. Now Desmond's a pretty fast runner. Average 20 stolen bases a season in his minor league career. Gets in rather easily, although he overslid the bag. Able to get a hand back on the base. Well, that's something that this Nationals team can do. This year, they've got a lot of speed up and down their lineup with Morgan and Desmond and Guzman, Maxwell, hiding down there in that seven spot. Out 
outside corner and a strike to make it one and two on the veteran Guzman. There's former Cup manager Jim Riggleman. He's from Maryland. So he's with his hometown team, the Nationals. This is his first full season. Had the interim tag removed in November. Guzman chasing and striking out. No, maybe he got a piece of it. He did, and that will send Desmond back to second. Guzman chasing a horrible pitch there in the dirt. Looked like he did just get a piece of it. Which for the time being is a break for the Cubs if you can come back and get Guzman out and leave that runner at second base. Adam Dunn loves it when he comes to the plate with no or one outs in an inning and a runner at third. Cubs pitching staff has been very stingy lately. The starters with a 1.98 over the last nine. The bullpen an ERA of one and a half over the last five. But Washington jumping on Gorzolani for at least one here in the first. Another one two pitch is golfed high and pretty well hit. Marlon Bird's tracking and he's not going to catch it. And look where the ball landed as the wind really pushed it back towards center. Guzman on his way to third. He has a triple and it's two to nothing. That was not a misplay, Bob, by Marlon Bird. Let's get that straight right now. I've watched a lot of batting practice and uh, the ball never ended up where it looked like it was going to go. Look at the location of that pitch. Giovanni Soto was going down to pick it out of the dirt and somehow Guzman managed to get the barrel on it and drive it to the warning track in center field. I am amazed at the distance that Morgan and Guzman have been able to drive the ball into the teeth of the wind here tonight. Well, and now Adam Dunn's going to get that opportunity I was talking about with a runner at third and less than two outs. This guy is a dead fly ball hitter. Now the one thing you know as a center fielder and a right fielder is that anything hit up in the air, the ball is going to move toward right. But in Bird's case, he was essentially guessing because he was flat out running away from home plate. I saw a ball in BP that was hit right at the 400 marker, was just just to the right of center, and the ball ended up near the green door, almost at the 368 sign. That's how much the wind is pushing balls toward right. So I mean a. A typical fly ball that's well hit tonight could move from the left of your screen almost all the way to your right. Which means uh, Kosuke Fukudome is going to be pretty busy as will Justin Maxwell who's playing right for the Nationals. And we saw Ryan Terrio's adventure with the pop up out into shallow left field last night. He turned around from the shortstop position sprinted about 100 feet out into left field. Stopped and then turned around and sprinted back into the infield and ultimately made the catch at the second base bag. This is Gorzolani's fourth start of the year, and it's the first time he's given up runs in the opening inning. And still nobody out. And the 2 2 is hit foul back to the seats. Oh, Bob, I tell you, one of the the wonderful things about our job, and this is something I think uh, any Cub fan would die to do, but I got to stand at the batting cage and listen to Billy Williams and Ron Santo talk about windy days in the 60s. As Dunn strikes out, so Gorzolani comes up with a big punch out. And let's get that game time Chrysler forecast brought to you by Chrysler. For more info on our vehicle lineup, log on to Chrysler.com or stop by your Chicagoland or Northwest Indiana Chrysler dealer today. The wind chill in the mid 30s and the wind whipping out of the north at 15. That forecast is misspelled. There should be a couple more R's in there. 
Infield's going to come in against Josh Willingham, who takes it low for ball one. I asked Billy uh, about last night. I said, was the wind blowing a lot harder when you caught Hank Aaron's would be home run and the Ken Holtzman no hitter? He said, oh, it was blowing a lot harder that day. Ronnie had hit a, a three run homer to left center that day. It was a line shot. And they both agreed the, the, the only time you can hit a home run on a day like this, if you keep it low and you hit it to left or right center, for whatever reason, the wind gets blocked in those two areas. It was August 19, 1969. Now Ronnie talks all the time about that area between the well in left field and the door out there in left center field. Now that's an area where the ball seems to carry pretty well regardless of conditions, especially the low line drive that you're talking about. There's a Cub legend. Fully healed. Fully healed, yep. No well, stitches or anything above the uh, upper lip. A little shaving incident yesterday. Right back in the saddle today. High and away, two and two on Willingham. Doesn't get much easier after Willingham. Future Hall of Famer Pudge Rodriguez with his 4-11 batting averages on deck. But first things first, the pitch. He pops it up. And Guzman's not even tagging. Fukudome the catch and the second out. So Gorzolani with a chance to somewhat limit the damage. And it may not seem like much, but after a leadoff triple followed by a single, followed by another triple, if you could get out of this inning allowing only two runs, uh, that's a pretty nice job of damage control by the Cubs left hander. Not going to be easy with Pudge at the plate. He has uh, had a resurgence in his career at the plate in the early going this season. Two plate appearances short of qualifying as baseball's leader in batting average. He was a late scratch with some lower back issues last night. And remember Pudge with the uh, Houston Astros hit his 300th career home run in this ballpark. Much better start, even though he doesn't have a home run. He's piling up his hits. I'm trying to figure out why he's piling up so many hits in the early going, and the general consensus is he's being more patient at the plate. Where have we heard that before? And he's been willing to drive the ball to the opposite field a lot more. Seemed like he got a little home run happy last year. Tap back to Gorzolani, so he'll strand Guzman at third. The Nationals, however, get two. In support of veteran righty LeVon Hernandez.
Here's Lou Pinella's Pepsi lineup for tonight's game against the Nationals. Brought to you by Pepsi. Every Pepsi refreshes the world. Ryan Terrio and Marlon Bird, the two hottest Cubs at the moment. But to be honest, there are a lot of guys on that list. Fukudome, uh, Ramirez with some better at bats. Soriano took three walks last night. Giovanni Soto hitting eight to 349. Quick look at the Nationals defensively. Willingham, Morgan, and Maxwell. Three times he's been voted the best athlete in the, the uh, Nationals organization. Gonzalez, Desmond, Guzman, and Dunn across the infield today. As Len mentioned earlier, the future Hall of Famer, Yvonne Pudge Rodriguez, behind the plate today for Levon Hernandez. I was talking with Pudge Rodriguez before the game. I said, how do you like to catch Levo? And he said, uh, on a night like this, especially with the back issues, he said, it's a good night to catch Levon because wherever I put the glove, he will hit it. And Terrio hits the pitch to short. Desmond throws him out. I said in the opening of the show, Len, that I fully expected Levon Hernandez to take advantage of the conditions here tonight. And if that's the case, you'll see a lot of low to mid 80s fastballs up and over the plate where the Cubs hitters will elevate that ball in the air to the outfield. He throws everything but and including the kitchen sink up there to the plate. He'll sink his fastball. He'll cut it. He'll throw a four-seamer. He'll change speeds on his curveball. He's got a slider, a straight changeup, and he will invent pitches as he feels he needs it. Now, did you say he actually throws a kitchen sink? Yes, he does. Grabs it by the faucet and lets it go. A diving stop, and Desmond just simply made it an infield hit as Hernandez lost his glove. Going after that ground ball. So a base hit for Fukudome. By the way, you cannot throw your glove at the ball. I don't think that's what he was doing. It just came off. Yeah. If in the umpire's judgment it's intentional, it's a completely different situation. But I think uh, because of the conditions, the cold here tonight, uh, get a little leeway on that one. He was just trying to uh, stab that ball off to his right yeah. side. There you go. I mean, that says it all. We've seen a guy lose his glove and now a bat on this frigid night. And we hope everybody's all right. Derek's already uh, said you can have it. I'm going to get a new one. Well, hopefully he can place a base hit as well as he placed that bat toss into the stands and hit an empty seat. He whistled over the heads of some of the fans over there on the third base side, but fortunately for everybody, hit an empty seat. Usually a guy will ask for that bat and then give the fan a new one, but Derek just decided, you know what, I don't like that one anyway. Hit foul and into the upper deck. Well, when we can, for young baseball players out there, we like to say, uh, you know, watch this guy. Uh, I think all the young pitchers out there would be best served in paying attention to what Levon Hernandez does on the mound. Hopefully the Cubs will knock him around tonight. But no matter what, he knows what he's doing. He will not light up the radar gun. Lined and caught. What a catch by Gonzalez, the third baseman. To rob Derek Lee of a base hit. Lee waited back on an off-speed pitch. Looked like that ball was ticketed for the left field corner, but Alberto Gonzalez stretches out to the full length of his body to make that catch and keep the ball out of left field. Now you're absolutely right about Levon Hernandez. He swings the bat well. He's a good bunter. He's a good base runner. He's a good fielder out there on the mound. And as far as pitching goes, uh, he knows what he's doing. Adding and subtracting. He can be frustrating for opposing hitters at times. I remember one of the most frustrating nights in recent Cubs history was game three of the division series in 07. When he was with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Frustrated the Cubs all night. Oh and two on Marlon Bird. 
by the way, that diving stop by Gonzalez brings up the point about the Nationals' defense. They were awful last year. They are much improved defensively, and as Bob talked about last night, they're out there every day working under Jim Riggleman. Swing and a miss, and that ends the Cubs first. An infield hit, but no runs. It's two to nothing, Washington. Two nothing Nationals as we get into the second. The Cubs won last night. So both teams coming in at 10 and 10. See if Tom Gorzolani can settle in. The Nationals wouldn't allow that to happen in the first. Let's check out the AT&T U-verse replay. Speaking of Nationals defense, this was Sunday in the ninth inning. Justin Maxwell helping preserve a one to nothing win as the Dodgers had the tying run at second base. Find out more of what's possible at att.com. AT&T rethink possible. And the 2 0 has popped up. Fontenot drifting and a rather circular route, which we're going to see a lot of tonight as he makes the catch. Post case saying, Nice job, Mike. Or something to that effect. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's very important for the defenders to keep their feet moving tonight. That ball's going to move around depending on the wind gusts. I don't feel like you can camp underneath the ball. Uh, you have to keep your feet moving, keep your head still, and try to stay with every ball hit in the air. In there on Gonzalez, who's playing third. They're still without Ryan Zimmerman in terms of uh, being a starting player. He has uh, hamstring issues. And is missing his sixth consecutive start. We did see him as a pinch hitter last night. 0-2 oh on Gonzalez. Sharply hit ground ball in the hole. The jump throw by Terrio. And Derek had to come off the bag to get it. As Gonzalez picks up an infield single. Hey kids, have you ever dreamt of running the bases at Wrigley Field? Well, now you can. The Chicago Cubs are proud to present family Sundays at the friendly confines this spring. Purchase four tickets to any Sunday home game in May, and each child 15 and younger in your group will get a chance to run the bases following that day's game. Tickets are limited, so visit Cubs.com to order today. As Bob mentioned Levon Hernandez. As a good hitter, fields his position well. 
And off to a great start on the mound. Career 226 hitter. He has nine career home runs. There's the bunt as it snakes up the line. It's foul. 11 consecutive seasons of 30 or more starts for Levon Hernandez. His record may be around 500, a couple games above, a couple games below every year, but he takes the ball. He is a very reliable starting pitcher. Took it low. One and one the count. Quick meeting between Levon Hernandez and Pat Listash, possibly telling his pitcher that if Aramis Ramirez charges too hard too soon from third base, pull that bat back and take a slash at the ball. Something we've seen Levon Hernandez do in the past. He's very adept at that fake bunt and then slash swing. Just swinging away that time. It's a very easygoing demeanor. Kind of makes everything he does look easy. Certain guys have that flair. Bob, you, you lost your tiara. <laughs> I replaced it with his stocking cap instead. <laughs> but those tiaras just don't keep your ears warm on a night like this. I've tried. Give us a wave. Come on, give us that wave. Nationals already with four hits. Including three in a row to start the game. Run it goes, and Hernandez fouls it back. That says a lot about him as a batter. Could do a lot of different things with Levon Hernandez up there. The Nationals have been aggressive here early on. Long look by Gorzolani at the runner, and the pitch is taken outside. Two and two. Leadoff man, Roger Morgan, who tripled to open the ball game, is on deck. Ground ball, how about two? The flip to Terry on the relay with plenty of time to get Gorzolani out of this second. Bottom two, two nothing Washington.
Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN-TV is sponsored in part by the Illinois Lottery Mega Millions. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $191 million. That was not right. (laughs) And and they've been here since batting practice. I saw those guys out there about 5 o'clock this afternoon. They have got to be frozen. Or numb. Or numb. Or medicated. Here's Aramis Ramirez, who took a bases loaded walk in the 10th against Brian Bruni to win it last night. Struggling along at a 145 clip, but he's had a good approach, and you appreciate the patience in that 10th inning at bat with a guy who's struggling like Ramirez. He could have been. Pretty anxious to swing the bat. When he did have a couple of borderline pitches in that sequence, it would have been very easy to let that bat go and try to do some damage with a swing, but took the base on balls. Cubs went home happy. And give a shout out to George from Panama watching and tweeting tonight. Guessing it's a little bit warmer in Panama than it is here. As Ramirez bounces foul, you can email us at Lennonbob at Tribune.com or follow us like George is on Twitter.com slash Lennonbob. See that new uh, heater they have in the dugout? Oh, it yeah. works. Yes, it does. That's real strength heat coming out of the far end of the dugout. Lou joked before the game last night he was going to manage from the third base side of the dugout because that's where the heat is. That's why all those guys are on that side of the dugout. I know coming in here as a visiting player, they used to set up those portable propane heaters to sound like a jet engine. By the end of the day, you had a headache from listening and a headache from smelling the propane fumes, but if not, you would freeze to death. Slow breaker at 76, taken outside, full count three and two. I think Levon also with the body language, he almost tries to lull people to sleep. Here it is. It's driven deep to center. Morgan's back on it, and he's going to have room to make the catch. And a ball that was squared up pretty nicely by Ramirez. Well, and it may be of little consolation to Aramis Ramirez, but uh, he's had a number of at bats like this going back to the series in Milwaukee. Works deep counts, finally gets a good pitch to hit, and has hit it hard, unfortunately, tonight, the wrong night to hit a fly ball to center field. He's getting closer, though. Now, Alfonso Soriano, who tied his single game career high last night with three walks. One and one, that caught the corner. Fourth time in his career, he has walked three times. The last coming in 2007. Another one right on the edge, one and two. Hernandez is a workhorse. In his first three starts, he went seven. Then a complete game, nine innings. Last time out, he went eight and lost two to nothing to Ebaldo Jimenez of the Rockies. That's feathered out in the right center. Nice job to sit back and wait for it. And Soriano is on with one out. And the two runs against Hernandez coming on two solo home runs by Miguel Olivo and Ian Stewart. Well, we've seen a lot of at bats like this from Soriano lately. That slider low and away keeps his hands back. Hits it to the opposite field. A 
That's a pitch earlier in the season and throughout most of the season last year that Fonzie would get out there and try to hook to the left side of the diamond, either swing through it or hit a weak ground ball to short. Staying on it, driving it to the opposite field this year. One and nothing on the second baseman, Mike Fontenot, getting his first start of the series. There's a base hit. Soriano is going to take a look at it, and he's going to try to get to third, and Morgan has to throw to second. Soriano got near second base and then turned it up a notch. Well, the Cubs go first to third, at least early on. They've done it as well as just about anybody in baseball. You know, some players call this ghosting. You see Soriano slowed down ever so slightly. That's when Niger Morgan was looking back into the infield. And then he put his head down, ran hard to third base. Morgan eventually just decided to concede that base and throw the ball back into second. Cubs going into tonight, going first to third on a single. They've done it 12 times, tied for the second most in the lead. This could be two, but it's only one as the throw goes right in to the visitors' dugout. It's two to one, so Soto will end up at second base on a throwing error by the second baseman, Guzman. And he'll also get an RBI on the fielder's choice. Looked like a Taylor made double play ball hit to third base. Fondo just did get on to Christian Guzman enough to make him pull that throw wide of first base to Adam Dunn. And the Cubs cut the lead in half. Zolani bounces. Guzman will get another chance with a shorter throw and a little less pressure. And that's it. That run will be earned. It's 2 1 Washington. That's two Cubs one as we get into the third. Don't forget to check out our WGN baseball blog on WGNTV.com. Click on the sports link and look for the blog. We have a new podcast that's available for viewing. Details on Randy Wells Red Dirt Fest. 
coming up later this summer. Great night of music for charity. And uh, today's Cubs Care Luncheon as well. And also Jim Riggleman on Chicago Baseball Stories. Go to WGNTV.com. Ball one. Uh, Niger Morgan. We had a great uh, event here at Wrigley Field once again today as the Cubs, along with the McCormick Foundation, announced more than $1 million in donations to almost 50 nonprofit organizations serving those in need in the Chicago and especially the Lakeview area. Chairman Tom Ricketts, most to the front office. And outfielder Tyler Colvin on hand, and the Cubs and Cubs Care have now donated more than $15 million to nonprofit organizations since 1991. It's a great annual event, and uh, Tyler Colvin was a big part of it. We appreciate his participation. Three and two on Morgan. Ground ball to Fontenot. Morgan runs so fast. He ran out of his helmet. Wearing that undercap, he's had a lot of problems keeping the helmet on with that thing, but trying to keep his ears warm, keep some of that body heat in. Nice job by Tom Gorzolani working his way back in the sequence there, falling behind 3 0. And Nigel Morgan is not a guy you want to put on base. You have to make him hit his way on. Desmond with an RBI single his first time. Koske keeps his feet moving and makes the play. Traveling this season, take the Chicago Cubs with you. Subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Cubs game live or on demand on your computer. Visit Cubs.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv. Baseball everywhere. Another pop up this time by Guzman, but no play for Derek Lee. Uh, we want to wish our good friend, the uh, Hall of Famer, Bob Euchre, who has conducted the seventh inning stretch here at Wrigley Field many times, known as Mr. Baseball. And in Wisconsin, he's known as the voice of the Brewers, his 40th season in the Brewers radio booth. He works with our former colleague here, Corey Provis, and uh, was announced today that Bob is going to undergo heart surgery and is going to miss the better part of three months. So we want to wish Uke all the best, and he's going to have surgery later this week, and we hope for a very quick and painless recovery. Bob is a 75, but you'd never know it if you uh, hung around him. He loves this game, and it keeps him young. And he makes us laugh. Oh, does he ever. So we had a big news conference before the uh, Brewers hosted the Pirates tonight. Line to center and right at Marlon Bird. Go one, two, three, third for Gorzolani.
Inning. Let's check out the crowd. Here's the first inning fan camp. See who's enjoying the game. This is Hey Soul Sister by Train. Budweiser, it's what we do. So the Cubs got one in the second to draw within a run. Brian Terrio bounced out his first time up. He hasn't made a lot of outs. He's 16 for his last 31. A six game multi hit streak. That's at least two hits and six in a row. Sometimes this gets lost in the shuffle after the fact. But remember, Ryan had a day off recently. It was his first day off of the season. And he came back smoking hot at the plate. Not saying that's why, but to think an occasional day off is good for the mind and the body for these guys, even early in the year. Now, whether you're going good or going poorly, if, you, if you're going bad, sometimes the best thing you can do is sit over there in the dugout and Watch your teammates go about their business and realize that you can slow the game down a little bit. And when you're rolling like Ryan Terrio is and getting on base two or three or four times a game, in the case of that final game in Milwaukee, five hits, it takes a toll on the body. You're out there sliding and running the bases, and uh, sometimes you need to shut it down for a day, even when you're swinging the bat well. The payoff delivery is hit in the air to right. And it's hit right at Maxwell for the out. An Ernest Hemingway look right there. Our fans braving the cold weather tonight. We're paying for that first homestand when the weather was by and large ideal a couple of 80 degree days I'll tell you what I'll take clear skies and cold any day over warm and a lot of rain we haven't seen the tarp unfurled yet that's the way we like it two and0 on Fukudome a day after his 33rd birthday he gets his first start of the homestand. A couple of big games in Milwaukee over the weekend. You know, if LeVon Hernandez holds true to form at some point tonight, probably against a left handed hitter, he's going to roll a curveball up there at about 62 miles an hour. Just keep an eye on those radar gun readings. That's his fastball, 82 miles an hour. He's got a little more in the tank. He can probably rush it up to 86, 87 if he felt he needed it. But he'll be all over the place with his velocities tonight. Ball four, he walked it. So first walk issued by Hernandez. As he faces Derek Lee, who lined out hard the third his first time. Over the winter, LeVon picked up racquetball. After being challenged by a retirement aged man he met at a fitness club in Miami, Florida. Diving stop, Desmond the flip, Guzman the turn, safe at first. And Jim Riggleman's going to come out, and he might have a beef here with Jerry Davis. I thought they might have gotten them, and the Cubs got a break. We get the benefit of replay. The umpires in this case do not, and the inning is still alive. Well, we've been told coming into this series that Ian Desmond was a very athletic shortstop, and he's done nothing to dispel those uh, descriptions here in this series so far. Covered a lot of ground up the middle of the field there. 
Ends up on his belly. The quick toss on to Guzman. Guzman didn't get a lot on that throw to Adam Dunn at first base. Get another look at it from this angle. See if we can determine if D. Lee was out. Very but close. He's safe. But he's safe. He's That's out, but call. he's safe. Yep. Well, the first base umpire watches the bag for the runner's foot to hit the base and listens for the ball to hit the glove. And uh, occasionally it's going to be tough to determine whether you heard the ball hit the ground or whether you heard the ball hit the glove. And that time on the short hop, perhaps Jerry Davis heard the ball hit the ground and thought it was in the glove of Adam Dunn already. Well, that wouldn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? It's a tough call for a first base umpire when that ball makes two noises over there before it gets in the first baseman's mitt. I have no idea what you're talking Neither about. Neither do I. Don't I. You wriggle off your own hook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do understand what you mean. Kind of. Kind of. Low and outside. 3 0 on Bird. That's a feeble attempt to at defend an umpire. I'm not used to doing that. <laughs> Here's a pitch. It is a strike. Marlin with a five game run streak. And also with at least two hits in five straight. Derek running on the 3 1. And it's ballooned down the right field line. Maxwell with a long run, and he makes the grab in fair ground. We've completed three. It's 2 1, Washington. Nationals got two right off the bat off Tom Gorzolani. The Cubs got one back in the second. We move to the fourth. As Adam Dunn will bat against a tilted Cubs defense. Shifted to the right on the infield. Actually, the only two guys in the infield dirt and five on the outfield grass. Looks a little like batting practice. <laughs> and Adam Dunn can sometimes make it look like batting practice. Well, and speaking of batting practice, I mentioned the wind was blowing a lot stronger earlier this afternoon when the Nationals were hitting. But you would never know it 
by the cuts that Adam Dunn was taking in that cage today. He was hitting balls out onto Sheffield Avenue and got some up into the bleachers in left field right through the teeth of the wind. This is a big, strong man. He has led whatever team he's been on in home runs each of the last eight years. Zolani's 2-2 two, two, and uh, he went. Call made down at third by Greg Gibson. Breaking ball from Tom Gorzolani took a little off of it, swept it across the plate, down and away. Done clearly out in front of home plate with that check swing. Down on strikes. Willingham swinging away. Fukudome went back now in and over a bit toward the line. Cup fans, if you want to manage the game along with Lou Pinella, log on to WGNTV.com right now. Click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner to connect to all the up-to-the-minute stats and information while you're watching at home. Game Zone is sponsored by The Great Escape, pools, patio and play sets, hot tubs, and more. Hot tub. Ooh. But Rodriguez takes ball one. And another hit for Rodriguez. He's one for two as his average stays over 400 for the year. It goes without saying when you're hitting over 400 for the year, you're doing a lot of things right at the plate. I mentioned earlier in the game, he's been going to the opposite field quite a bit this year. That time waited back on a change up and hit a screaming line drive over Terrio's head in the left. You know, I, I didn't ask Pudge today. If I get a chance to see him tomorrow, I'll ask him. I'm sure you'd be interested to, to know the answer. You know, what it has to feel like knowing in the entire history of this sport, nobody has caught more games than that guy right there. 2,303 games caught. That's the all time lead at arguably the toughest position in the game. And he's only allowed one stolen base this season, and that came on a pickoff attempt at first base when the runner advanced on to second, and he was credited with a stolen base against when he didn't even touch the ball. Still one of the best throwing catchers in the game, even at his age. And he's at 42% for his career. Two and one on Justin Maxwell. I mean, most teams don't even run when Pudge is behind the plate. Unless they, he gets a pitcher on the mound that's ridiculously slow, teams just don't even challenge him anymore. at every other position other than pitcher I mean it's kind of apples and oranges but I would say Bob that, that that's the most impressive position to lead all time in games I'm not uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir I don't have to talk you into believing that and to know that he has been dealing with back spasms is not a shocker ball four two on for Gonzalez well, all that's the good stuff, but uh, I will tell Pudge that in another 15 or 20 years, he's going to have some issues. Oh, yeah. It's inevitable. <laughs> Just up above the belt, Maxwell able to check his swing and take the base on balls. Good slide block by Soto. Who was Rodriguez's teammate last year in the World Baseball Classic? Representing Puerto Rico. Out 
A tapper hit toward third. It's foul. Ramirez tried to field it while it was still fair, and he just stepped on third base. But it just kicked foul at the last second. A little chopper down the third baseline. A lot of tops been hit right near the edge of the infield grass and definitely went into foul territory. You can see Pat Listash and Pudge Rodriguez both helping third base umpire Greg Gibson make that call. And Aramis really couldn't go get it because if he did that, he wouldn't have been able to stay on third and get the force. We've talked a lot already in the first two games of this series about the future of this Nationals organization, and it's based around a couple of their number one draft picks last year, Steven Strasburg and Drew Storen. Figured to be the top of the rotation starter and a closer for years to come, but the guy at first base, Maxwell, is the guy that's going to figure in their future heavily as well. Gonzalez grounds out, goes Alani Strands 2, it's 2-1 two Nationals. Hey, welcome back. Ramos Ramirez starting the Cubs fourth. Soriano and Fontano to follow. Marlon Bird's been in that cleanup spot a bit lately. Blue would not commit. Nor really could he do anything permanent because there are always little tweaks to the lineup. But it makes sense with Bird being as hot as he is to be hitting ahead of Ramirez at the moment. On the infield. Dunn makes a catch. So one away brings up Soriano, who has scored the lone touch tally. Send out happy birthday wishes to diehard Cubs fan Eileen Wickland. Well, then uh, you talk about Soriano scoring the lone Cubs run in this game. If he doesn't aggressively go first to third like he did on Mike Fondo's base hit to left field, he doesn't score that run. See Tim McCarver, national broadcaster, who does a fair amount of Cubs games. Come in the day before and we'll talk about how the team is doing. And inevitably, we start talking about base running. 
and outfield play and all those little things that Don Zimmer long talked about. Don Zimmer uh, for years has insisted that the one fundamental that can win or lose more games than any other is base running. It's charged by Desmond as he gets the out. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. The sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Cubs are locked into another tight one. They played a lot of very close games this season. Half of their first 20 have been decided by one or two runs. I think that's part of the reason why Lou Pinella made the, the switch. Having Carlos Zambrano go into the bullpen. The Cubs are just four and six in games decided by less than three. Z was very good last night. Carlos Marmol got the win. Carlos Silva with yet another quality start. So three Carloses pitched for the Cubs last night. Ed Hardick pointed out it's the first time the Cubs used three pitchers with the same first name since three Bills made an appearance in 1966. Carlos Cube. Morgan in center. That's the first one, two, three for Hernandez. Still 2 1 for the visitors. Now time for the fifth inning brought to you by Subway. Hey, Chicago land viewers, how'd you like to win five $5 footlongs from Subway? Just be the 500th texter to Subway to text Subway to 97999. Go to WGNTV.com for complete information and rules. Hernandez leading off the Nationals fifth, fouling it off. Welcome home to Max, U.S. Air Force. A little trouble keeping that banner secured on this windy night. Yeah. 
way outside. Zolani has settled in nicely. He's given up just one hit over the last three innings after allowing two runs in the first. So let me finish up the racquetball story. Uh, Levon Hernandez met this uh, older gentleman who challenged him to a racquetball match, and uh, Levon got trounced 15 to 1 and 15 to 2. Then afterward, he thought, I really like this. And that's how he uh, stayed in shape over the winter. Really got into it. I fly out to center. And Marlon Bird makes a catch. Once again, you can check out our baseball podcast, Lennon Bob's podcast at WGNTV.com. We recorded our most recent one in Milwaukee over the weekend. And that picture was taken when it was much warmer here at Wrigley Field. One guy who uh, is a fantastic racquetball player is Jeff Conine, who's now retired from baseball. He had to limit his racquetball playing while he was a baseball player, but uh, world champion or U.S. champion caliber player. That's a fast sport. Yes, indeed it is. Yeah, that's a sport where you can call hinder, right? If your opponent happens to get in your way inadvertently, you call a hinder. It's kind of a no harm, no foul. Play the point over again. They haven't played a lot of racquetball. But I trust you. Well, I think that's right. It sounds right. Foul tip. Strike three. Morgan is out. You mentioned Steven Strasburg, who can hit over 100 on the radar gun. Well, the Cubs have. A highly touted double-A prospect. His name is Andrew Kashner. We saw a lot of him in spring training. And you see what he's doing with Tennessee. Kashner will probably be with the Cubs at some point in the near future. Strasburg, it might be weeks, maybe months before he's with the Nationals. But uh, everything I've read indicates... They don't want to bring uh, Strasburg up to the majors until they feel like he's going to be here to stay. They don't want him going back and forth. Line right at Derek Lee. So a hard hit out for Desmond, and that's a very quick inning for Gorzolani. The Cubs try to tie it up at least when we come back. 2-1 Nationals. Yeah, just yeah. now. They got rained out last He has a 0.52, Storm 0.96. We're so lucky. Okay. Zay win. Levon Hernandez. In another pitcher's duel tonight, it's with Tom Gorzolani. He leads two to one. He'll face Gorzolani after Giovanni Soto. 
who takes a strike. And let's check out who's moving forward with Toyota. I love it when a plan comes together. Giovanni Soto, highest on base percentage in the first 20 games since 1952. Gio second on the list. Rick Monday back in 72 at a 521 on base percentage. Gio not far behind at 517. Toyota and your local Toyota dealers, official partners of the Chicago Cubs. You can just maintain what he's doing right now. He might win an MVP. 341. On base over 500. Slugging 500. Low, 2-2 two and two on the Cubs catcher. We were just talking about Steven Strasburg. Five no-hit innings tonight. Against Redding. Drew Storen pitched two innings to get the save. They give up two hits combined, no walks, nine strikeouts. So we go to Washington in late August, the 23rd through the 25th. I will be really surprised if both guys are still in the minors at that point. You know, one thing about Steven Strasburg, at least if you listen to scouts around baseball, he's not as overextended and overused as a lot of superstar young pitchers can be. Soto lines one into left field. He stays red hot at the plate. Steven Strasburg pitched for Tony Gwynn at San Diego State, a guy who was very aware of how much a workload could do to a young arm, and he was very careful not to overuse him, not to pitch him on consecutive days or anything crazy like that that you will occasionally see happen with young pitchers. Well, I'll tell you what, Len, this may be an oversimplification, but you look at Soto and Soriano and Marlon Bird and Ryan Terrio. The thing that jumps out to me is the pitch recognition that those guys have acquired as the season has progressed. Rarely chasing pitches out of the strike zone, working a lot of deep counts, driving off-speed pitches to the opposite field, and when they get fastballs in the zone, they're hitting them hard to their pole field. Cubs did work on their bunting today. And uh, Lou mentioned in the uh, day game tomorrow, back to Matt Nays the rest of the week after tonight. So you really have to take advantage of the home night games to get in our extra work. Alan Trammell was working with the middle infielders. Cubs have failed a couple of times lately to get bunts down. Rosalani gets it down. Rodriguez was going to throw it a second, and he has just enough time to get the out at first with Guzman covering. Well, that's why you run him hard. Pudge Rodriguez came out from behind home plate. He thought he had a chance at second base. Decides to hang on to the baseball. In the meantime, Tom Gorzolani's busting it down at first baseline. He didn't assume anything. Pudge was almost too casual in making that throw to first base. Got Gorzolani by a half a step. So two cracks at getting that tying run to the plate. Started last night 0 for 3 before picking up singles in his final two at bats. The last one ultimately led to the winning run. He scored on the bases loaded walk to Ramirez. Can't stop the riot. Strike. 
It's two and one. And as LeBron gets a sign from Rodriguez, the kick and the pitch just away. Make up doubleheader in New York, and the Mets shut out the Dodgers in the first one, four to nothing. As they stay hot, they've won four in a row. Johan Santana over Hiroki Kuroda. And in game two, it's 3-3. Three, three. And the bottom of the fifth, both teams already into their bullpen. Charlie Hager and Oliver Perez are out. Rockies lead the Diamondbacks seven to nothing. Ubaldo Jimenez has a no hitter going through three. <laughs> About two in one season. We're always keeping our eye on the Cardinals. They're down two one at home against Atlanta in the bottom of the fifth. Derek Lowe and Chris Carpenter in a battle of aces. And Ludwig for the home run in that one. Fly ball. This could be trouble. Nope. Morgan's going to get there. A rather large radio. I would even call that a boombox. I think it's too big to be called a Walkman. It's one of those multi purpose survival units. Uh, it's also an air compressor and a generator. It might be a heater, you're right. <laughs> With an antenna. Maybe he's watching us. Maybe there's a television in there somewhere. Might just be a heater. He'll just keep his hands warm. First day with a good ball game. One for one. Singled back in the first inning. Walked in third. He too has been seeing the ball really well. We haven't seen uh, many, if any, of those spinorama swings that he was so notorious for his first couple of years here. Hernandez through five has held the Cubs to one. Gorzolani's held the Nationals to two. Two on Nationals. Top of the sixth. They found out they're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I 
She doesn't seem to be quite as no. impressed as he is. A little embarrassed. She's <laughs> trying to watch the game in peace. Bitch. Oh. <laughs> I'm saying we're on TV. I'm saying I'm watching the game. Oh, and two. <laughs> And Guzman. Triple home a run in the first, but this could be a big play. He didn't get in. And as Gorzolani, with nobody out, retired three straight to get out of the inning. Oh, I see now. They're going to pass it around the ballpark to see if everybody can get on TV. And you know what? They just won. <laughs> I still want to know what that thing is. Very curious. Ukadome, the grab. It's been busy tonight, as you would expect, with the wind blowing in that direction, although it is uh, quieted down quite a bit. It's still very uh, chilly here at Wrigley Field tonight, but that wind uh, blowing straight in from left field has died considerably. I mean, it's, uh, it's to the point now where the home run ball becomes a factor once again. Early in the ball game, you could get away with making mistakes up and out over the plate, even to the biggest hitters in the lineup, but that's not the case anymore. Dunn gives it a ride, but Marlon Bird is going to have enough room right in front of the 400. Kathy Alex from Chicago is tonight's hit the jackpot with Powerball contestant. If the Cubs hit a home run in the next inning, Kathy Alex will win 100 chances to win the Powerball jackpot. Wednesday's jackpot is worth $30 million. A good spot in the order coming up. Lee Bird and Ramirez. Old hand with two down, nobody on. I want to remind Cub fans, still a chance to get in on the Way of Life campaign. Cubs would like to hear from fans who live and breathe Cubs baseball. You can visit Cubs.com and submit your short story about why Cubs baseball is a way of life. Cubs have got a lot of the entries from uh, all over the country and the world for that matter is Willingham. Skies into right center. Pukadome puts it in his pocket and that's the inning. As Gorzolani's cruising along, he trails, however, 2 1. On the Diamondbacks this Saturday, May 1st at 12.05, but be sure to get here early. The first 5,000 children 
seven and younger will receive a Cubs. Dora the Explorer plush doll compliments of Pepsi and Aquafina. Cup sixth. Three, four, and five. And they are a combined 0 for 6 against LeVon Hernandez, who's off to a fantastic start. You know, you go back to spring training, he only made two official Grapefruit League appearances. He signed late, February 24th. And apparently, he didn't need much of spring training. That's because he played racquetball all winter. That's right. You get the feeling you could wake up Navon Hernandez in the middle of January and take him to a ball field somewhere and he'd give you seven strong innings. He's the half brother of El Duque Orlando Hernandez from Cuba. Derek Lee drills it deep to left and Willingham oh. with a running grab. Josh Willingham is not known for his defense, but that was an excellent play. I thought that one for sure was going to get over his head. Or at least hook far enough away from him to get down for extra bases. Derek Lee absolutely clubbed that ball to left field. It looked like it was going to go straight over the head of Josh Willingham and then started to hook as it got out there into left field. Man, that's too bad. Good opportunity there for the Cubs. Had Derek Lee been able to get that one down. Well, he's uh, snake bitten at the moment as uh, Derek is now four for his last 39. But he's hit the ball very hard a couple of times. Former national Marlon Bird. It's a Ground ball to Guzman who throws him out. So now I ask you the question why did it take until February 24th before somebody decided to bring LeVon Hernandez to spring training? That's a real good question. I think occasionally teams get scared away by what appears to be a lack of conditioning. You talked about his very slow movements is slow wind up he doesn't really rush to do anything but it belies the fact that he's a really good athlete he's a good fielder good hitter as we've talked about when needed he's a good base runner and obviously a very good pitcher teams uh, feel every year that he's very near the end and he continues to prove them wrong Two out single by Ramirez, keeping it alive for Soriano. Well, at the very least, Levon's going to give you a lot of innings. We've been quality innings here early. At the end of the bat. At the end of the bat, but hit in a good spot. Right back up the middle of the field for a two out base hit. And Hernandez has a history of being a guy who. Will walk his share of hitters has a lot of base runners. It seems like he's always teetering on the brink of giving up multiple runs, but more often than not, he finds a way to tap dance out of trouble, get back in the dugout, and give his team a chance. Well, he's picking up the slack because Jason Marquis is on the disabled list with loose bodies in his right elbow. Jason got off to a very rough start, losing his first three starts. Garrett Mock lost uh, Detweiler, Chin Ming Wong recovering from shoulder surgery, Jordan Zimmerman. So they've had a plethora of injuries to potential starters or actual starters who were in their rotation. And because Marquis is out, Luis Atalano is up and he's going to pitch tomorrow against Ryan Dempster.
two of the three Carloses in the dugout. Would not expect to see Zambrano available tonight after pitching last night. Ground ball and it's picked up by Gonzalez the short throw to Guzman and that's it off to the seventh 2 one Washington. Well, it's Neely's birthday. Cubs need to win on Neely's birthday. They have taken their last four in a row, but they are down two to one as we get into the seventh. Yvonne Rodriguez, followed by Justin Maxwell and Alberto Gonzalez. Both starters still in. No action in either bullpen as we begin the seventh. High fly ball. Bird in right center. Calling for it and catching it. Tickets are selling quickly, but there's still time to get great seats for April and May games, in particular tomorrow's game against these Washington Nationals. Bleacher seats are still available as well. To purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com, call 1 800 the Cubs, or visit the Wrigley Field box office. New Bears running back Chester Taylor will conduct the seventh inning stretch after the next two outs. Maxwell showed bunt and took it for ball one. It's cold. It's Corey Miller on the right. Is that Edgar Tovar on the left? The two bullpen catchers. Notice Chester uh, had his Cubs jersey and short sleeves when he threw out the ceremonial first pitch, but it's even too cold for him. He's got <laughs> his jacket on. <laughs> the 3 0 is downstairs, ball four. Second time Maxwell has walked. 
And the only two walks given up by Gorzolani all night. 35 stolen bases at the AAA level last year for Maxwell, a guy you're definitely going to have to keep an eye on over there at first base. And he immediately runs. Here's a throw. He's out at second. He went head first. And Mike Fontano applied the tag as Soto guns him down. Two away. Well, not a great jump at all by Maxwell at first base, giving Giovanni Soto a chance and a nice quick tag by Terrio on the rear end. I'm not sure if Maxwell had his hand on that bag when the tag was applied, but in the estimation of second base umpire Brian Knight, the Cubs got him. It's the Nationals right out of the rally. In the hole, backhanded, Ryan Terrio, the throw to first. They got him on the tag. Time for the stretch with Chester Taylor. Today's catch conductor to take me out to the ball game is Chicago Bears running back Chester Taylor. All right, fans, y'all ready to win a Super Bowl this year? All right, let me hear y'all. One, two, three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ground. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if you never come back. One and we welcome to Chicago Chester Taylor, new Bears running back. And uh, great to have you here. And I know you're excited about the upcoming season. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. So, especially with playing Minnesota Vikings. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure. You always like playing your old team. Yes, yes. As Mike Fontenot steps in against Levon Hernandez, bottom of the order. So Fontenot, Soto, and a pinch hitter for Gorzolani. Mike Martz, another big addition. Uh, to the Bears offense. Yeah. Tell us about your new offensive coordinator. Um, he's a great coach. I mean, he's been around for a long time, and I believe our offense, if we catch defenses off guard, I mean, we're not going um, to be predictable. We're going to have different motions and shifts, so it's going to throw a lot of defenses off guard, so I'm looking forward to it. One and one on Fontenot. This will be Morgan in left center. Let's check out the first pitch. You actually were behind the pitching rubber, which is 60 feet 6 inches, <laughs> and you got it there in the air. Yeah. I haven't thrown a pitch since I was like 11 years old, so that's pretty good. <laughs> so it's cold, but you're from the Midwest, so exactly. not a huge deal, right? Even though you don't live in the Midwest in the off season, but. Uh, 
This is bare weather, as they say, right? Yeah, um, I played in Toledo, so that's all Midwest weather. It's always cold, so I usually play my best ball game in um, cold weather. How'd you do against Ohio U, Bob Brindley's <laughs> alma mater? I'm undefeated against them, so, uh -oh. yeah. Because uh -oh. <laughs> all they were so predictable. They played the um, random option when I was in school. I'm pretty sure they opened up by now, I hope. Well, when I was there, I think we only had one play. We didn't have any <laughs> options. <laughs> No option. Man. So y'all ain't wearing pretty to no games at least. Yeah. Football wasn't our sport when I was there. Oh, okay. That's, That's pretty much not y'all sport now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's still the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Xavier Nady's going to bat for the pitcher Gorzolani with the Cubs trailing by a run. I think after today I'm officially a um, baseball sports guy. I'm a sports baseball fan right now. And there's no better place than Wrigley Field. Okay. Where the Bears once played, and Northwestern will host Illinois this coming November. Oh, okay. So Northwestern, a good team here? Or Illinois? Yeah, Northwestern, a uh, very good year. And uh, that should be a fun one. Uh -huh. Against Illinois coming up. Who you got? Two to Soto is low and outside. Well, I got to <laughs> go with the. I mean, they're both local teams, but uh, yeah. they go with Northwestern. Here was a big day. Julius Peppers, and Chester Taylor. And check out some highlights. Oh, I remember that play. It's against the Bears. Yes. Along with your now former teammate, Brett Favre. I hope I can do the same thing against the Vikings. Morgan went back and now comes in and calls off Maxwell. Uh, Tell the Bears fans out there uh, what they can expect from you this season. They've seen you on other teams, but uh, what can they expect from you this year? Well, um, they can expect just going out there, playing, making plays, and just doing the best I can to help the team win because um, we're just trying to get some wins and get to the playoffs and get back to the Super Bowl where y'all was at a few years ago because I know that's the most important thing right now to me is getting the Super Bowl win. No doubt. Okay, every Bear fan and all your new teammates would agree with that. Here's Nady. Two outs and nobody on. Called strike. Who did you grow up uh, emulating? Um, Who was since, your I, hero? since I grew up in Detroit, you know, I was a big Lions fan. That's when Lions was good when they had Barry Sanders, Herman Moore, Brett Perryman, Mel Gray. You know, Barry Sanders I always admired because he was one of the best running backs that came up. Probably the most elusive running yes, back in the history of football. He didn't need an no offensive line. He was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Tyler Clifford is up for the Nationals. You know, Hernandez has been strong throughout. So y'all stand here with the window open the whole game? We do. Oh, okay. <laughs> y'all don't get cold. Y'all used to this game. Oh, we get cold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we leave it open. We like to be out in the elements. Okay. Well, Chester, I know it is cold up here, and uh, I don't know how prepared you were for the cold, but uh, we're going to let you get warm. Thanks so much uh, for stopping by. Appreciate it. Thanks for Welcome having me. Welcome to the Bears, and uh, we will be, be watching every Sunday. Right, thanks a lot. Best of luck, Chester. Day. All right, stay Thank warm. You. Stay warm. Uh, we will. <laughs> All right. Maybe we'll catch up with Chester when we go to Houston later this summer. Just missed. Two balls, two strikes. Deuces wild up on the board. That's low. He's worked a full count. Terrio would hit next if Beatty can reach. Well, Tom Gorzolani could have erased that first inning. Would have been a big time gem tonight as it was. He went seven innings and gave up only two runs. Fortunately, for the moment, the Cubs are down. Ground ball to third, picked up by Gonzalez, who fires across for the out. Another one, two, three for Levon Hernandez. 2 1 Nationals after seven.
when the game started, the pitchers would dominate. Well, that's been the case mostly, except for the first inning. A couple of triples by the Nationals as they grabbed an early lead. But Tom Gorzolani then settled in and gave the Cubs seven quality innings. Visit your Honda dealer and test drive a 2010 Honda CRV. Thought the Nationals might consider pinch hitting for their starter, but no. Levon has only made 96 pitches through seven. That's that's a drop in the bucket for him. And with him leading, he's going to stay in and face John Grabo. One ball, no strikes. Your thoughts on Corzolani tonight? I thought he was really good. I mean, the Nigel Morgan triple to start the ball game, I think, caught everybody by surprise that he was able to hit the ball that far into the teeth of the wind to start the game. And as the ground, the Rufant, no, no problem. Other than that, I thought he was really good. Even the Guzman triple was not a bad pitch. He went down and golfed at the center field. Let's check out today's BMW Ultimate Drive, talking about the Niger Morgan triple to start the ball game. That's going to be it. I mean, the wind at that point was really blowing in from left center field, hit it over Soriano's head. Marlon Bird had to come over from center field to finally track the ball down. And with Morgan speed, that's an easy triple. Hurry into the BMW Spring Sales Drive now through April 30th. A strike on Morgan. The Cardinals just got three in the bottom of the sixth, and they're still batting. Against Derek Lowe, it's 4-2 St. Louis. And are you sitting down, Bob? I'm sitting down. Close to the heater. You ready? Yeah. The Pirates lead the Brewers 2-1 in the top of the seventh after getting smoked again last night, 17-3. to They've lost 22 in a row to the Brewers in Milwaukee. Brewers have been held to five hits. There's six innings in that ball game. Let's see who's pitching. Karsten's pitching for the Pirates tonight. Jeff Karsten's and Randy Wolf. Better hurry. And the throw is off the bag. That's what speed will do. He made Grabo force his throw. It was offline and an error on Grabo. John got to the ball in pretty good shape, just a little too deliberate as he turned around and kind of took a crow hop before making that wide throw to first base. Not sure if they would have had Morgan anyway, but you have to know who your hitter runner is, and uh, John needed to be a little quicker on that little tapper to the left side. And it goes without saying, the cat and mouse will start again with Morgan on at first base. Pitching staff continues to struggle with errors. The Cubs, as a team, have committed 17. Seven by the pitching staff. One and nothing. Uh, Ian Desmond, the solo goes out to talk it over with his battery mate. Justin Berg is up in the Cubs pen right now, playing catch in front of the mound. And eventually, he'll be throwing in anger, as they say. You can see Lester Strode in the background there, checking that lineup card uh, taped up to the wall down there in the bullpen, looking at. Who's likely to come to the plate in this inning for the Washington Nationals? Maybe a potential pinch hitter should Justin Berg come into the ball game. He's going to try to give him the best scouting report possible if indeed he does come into the game. Morgan runs. Soto throws. Morgan is safe. Throw is a little offline, but wouldn't have mattered. Nope. 
Oregon finished second in the NL in steals last season. Great jump over there at first base. Morgan with a quick first two or three steps to get up to full speed. Notice how he slid. She got an update on that. Uh, his manager apparently has told him. And remember, he broke his hand last year on a head first slide here at Wrigley Field. You can go head first if you have to. But if you know you're going to make it, don't. Twitch. It's yeah. a real gray area. Yeah. If it's a close play, he has been given the green light to slide head first. And Mike Fondo cheating a little bit toward the bag at second. Uh, Morgan won't stop there. If he feels he can get a jump on John Grabo again, he'll take off for third base with one out in the end. The 3 0. They got the green light, 3 and 1. Morgan's body language has to make pitchers a little nervous. He can't sit still on the bases. It always looks like he's going to run. And he looks quick. He looks like a water bug. If you've ever seen those uh, long legged bugs that sit on top of the water and kind of slide from one side to the other, he's so quick on his feet. It has to make opposing pitchers and catchers nervous. Driven in the left. Morgan held up, but he should be able to score easily. The throw is going to go towards second and a key insurance run for the Nationals as the Cubs bullpen gives up an eighth inning run, something we saw way too much of in the first couple of weeks of the season. And that'll be unearned because Morgan got on via the error. And it's three to one. Now the air allowing Niger Morgan to reach first base in the first place is what uh, created this run for the Nationals with his speed he was able to easily steal second base and then come around and score on that base hit in the left field. Well, I don't care who you're playing in the major leagues when you give any team more than three outs in an inning. You're just uh, courting disaster. A home run swing from. A guy who doesn't hit a ton of them, Christian Guzman. High two balls and a strike. Twins shut out the Tigers to zip in Detroit. Francisco Liriano is three and zero, oh, eight shutout innings. John Roush got to save his seventh. Wins off to a great start. They have not lost a series all season. Well, that's why Carlos Zambrano is in the bullpen. These key seventh and eighth inning situations, and the Cubs have been outscored by a lot. Great foul. Like Guzman was trying to take a shot to the right side there with Derek Lee holding on Desmond at first base. It leaves that big hole on the right side of the infield. And Guzman had eyes on that big hole on the right side. Got him on a call third. Guzman knew it. Two outs. Giovanni Soto coming up out of his crouch. Desmond had decoyed over there at first base as if he were going to try to steal second, but slammed on the brakes. 
Occasionally a catcher can get a little jumpy and come out of his crouch too soon and block the vision of the home plate umpire, but that time Geo stayed down until the ball passed the hitting area and then came out of his crouch ready to throw. Runner goes. Here's a throw. Safe. Desmond two for two tonight in stolen bases. Takes off on first movement. Either that or he spotted something in Graybo's delivery to home plate that's different enough from his pickoff move to first. Quick peek back to home plate as Desmond went into his head first slide at second. Give us the psychology from behind the plate on a night like this where pretty much every base runner is going to go. You got to be ready every pitch. Oh yeah every pitch you have to be on your toes and be ready to get your upper body turned as you're receiving the pitch just to try to speed up your throw to second base as much as you possibly can and then make good throws to second base. I think that's the most important thing when you've got a team that likes to steal bases and gets big jumps off of first. Don't compound it by making bad throws in the dirt at second base or throwing the ball in the outfield and allow that base runner to go on to third. Tell you, with a left-handed pitcher on the mound, unless the guy's got a really good move to first, sometimes you're better off not even throwing over them. We've seen it happen repeatedly where the runner will take his lead and the lefty goes home, pitch after pitch after pitch, and the base runner's constantly breaking back to the bag. If you don't have a good pickoff move, once you show that move, now the runner has something to gauge. I caught a pitcher named Atley Hammaker, who was really good through the early part and mid part of the 80s for the San Francisco Giants, but he had a horrible pickoff move to first base. I always preferred that he never throw over to first, because as soon as he showed his pickoff move, uh, that opened the floodgates to the base runners. Three and two undone. Ground ball to shallow right where Fontenot is. A little bobble, but he still gets the out. The Nationals add an unearned run and now lead three to one. Brand new PNC Club of Chicago, the newly built club located down the third baseline, offers high-end catering, a full-service top-shelf bar, indoor and outdoor seating, and other benefits that allow for a truly all-inclusive game day experience. Membership also includes parking for every home game. To reserve your season tickets in the PNC Club of Chicago, call 773-404-4200. 
Top of the order against LeVon Hernandez is still in there in the eighth inning. Really a beautiful night. If you don't think about the uh, frigid temperatures. We haven't seen a cloud in this series. I think uh, LeVon Hernandez is complaining about the conditions. There's his 0 2. That's feathered down the right field line and is fair for Terrio. He can't test the arm of Maxwell. He will bring up the tying run in the form of Kosuke Fukudome. Feathered is a good description of that base hit down the right field line. That's the big slow curveball we've been waiting for from LeVon Hernandez. Terrio protecting the plate, shortened up his swing, and just punched that ball down the line for base hit. Koske with an infield hit, a walk, and a ground out. Jim Riggleman's going to make a double switch. Looks like Guzman, the second baseman, is coming out. Set of man, Tyler Clifford, coming in. We'll sort it out. When we come back, it's 3-1. Nationals. He's being told, you know what? Uh oh, uh oh, I'm being masked. We don't want to give away the secret. Tyler Clippard with 19 punch outs in under 15 innings. Get the bats ready a little bit sooner than against LeBron Hernandez. Yeah, Clippert, a big time power pitcher, his 19 strikeouts ties him with Carlos Marmol for strikeouts among relief pitchers in the National League. He sets up for Matt Caps, their closer. Terry over the leadoff single is at first. Adam Kennedy also came in and is playing second as part of the double switch. Clifford also has a real good straight changeup, which makes him equally effective against righties and lefties. Seemingly perfectly suited for an eighth inning guy. It's 
outside two and one. Derek Lee on deck. Need to play a little first and third of their own right here. Swing and a miss. Two and two. That's an adjust your thoughts pitch right there. A 2 1 changeup at 81 miles an hour with great arm speed really had Fukudome out in front. Full count, three and two. Nobody out. This big crowd getting into it 37,440. And he now on their feet for a 3 2 with Terry running. It's fouled back. Von Rodriguez was ready to catch and fire if Fukudome struck out. That's what we were talking about with Soto in the last half inning. Uh, really, all you can do as a catcher in an obvious run situation is try to. Get your body turned into a position to throw as quickly as possible. That time Pudge was almost had his shoulder pointed towards second base before that ball got into the hitting zone. Terrio goes again. Ball four. He walked it. Case the Cubs come all the way back. Justin Berg has been up for a while. Part of the order now. Two on, nobody out. It's Derek Lee. Ball one. He has smoked a couple balls for outs, lining out the third and then later to left. That's a strike. Back in the first inning, D. Lee with a line drive to Alberto Gonzalez at third base, taking away a potential for extra bases. Deep drive to left field. Josh Willingham ran it down on the warning track. That's all he can do is laugh. Yeah. A good pick by Rodriguez on the pitch in the dirt. And that's where Pudge Rodriguez' quickness behind the plate comes in. Doesn't shift his body over in front of that ball, just makes a backhanded play like you would see a first baseman picking a low throw out of the dirt. up but a long run for Maxwell he will get there as Terrio cannot tag the Clipper gets the first out of the inning here's Marlon Bird Quiet night so far for Bird, who has made a lot of noise lately. <laughs> Swing. 
slide step and a fastball is outside. One ball, no strikes. A bird is the word, yeah. Two and zero. Oh. Marlon Bird is usually good for one drive to the opposite field every ball game. A lot of room in right center field. Maxwell's playing really deep in right, as is Nigel Morgan in center. But Morgan shaded a few steps over into the gap in left center. Split that guy. Two and one. Terrio at second, Kukadome at first. Good speed. Here it is. Three and one. The Nationals uh, want an explanation. I think they didn't get the strike call because of the way Pudge Rodriguez caught that pitch. It could be right around the bottom of the knees there, right at the bottom of the strike zone, but Pudge caught it with his glove pointed up. Palm up rather than fingers up. Not hit very hard, and the out will be at first. Not a good result for the Cubs, but not the worst possible result, which would have been a double play. As it is, a single could possibly tie the game. Off the plate away, Marlon Bird hits it right off the very end of the bat. Fortunately for the Cubs, because he did not hit it hard enough for the Nationals to attempt a double play. Ramirez with an opportunity here to possibly give the Cubs a lead. Or rather tie the game, excuse me. Or if he hits a home run, he'd give him a lead. Swing and a miss. It'll be a long haul for Ramos to get that average up, but it is a long season. Already with a game winning RBI when he took a bases loaded walk in the 10th in game one. Win to speak of right now. Flags are barely moving in the left field corner and out in center field. Off the end of the bat, Dunn will field an underhand to Clipper to who tags the bag with his foot. Promising start to the inning. The first two got on. But nobody scored. It's 3 1 Washington to the ninth.
one Nationals as we get into the ninth. Right-hander Justin Bird will be the third Cubs pitcher tonight. Gray ball gave up an unearned run in the eighth. A clean shaven Justin Bird. Facing Josh Willingham. It's up and in. Ball one. Couldn't hold up in time. One and one. Matt Caps reportedly considered the signing with the Cubs over the winter, chose instead to go to Washington and be the closer. He would not have been the closer here. And he's off to an excellent start. He leads the majors with eight saves. For the Cubs, rookie lefty James Russell. Well, Milwaukee tied the Pirates in the seventh and just took the lead in the eighth. Prince Fielder with a home run off Javier Lopez. Which Kataris had that tied it with a home run in the seventh. Backed off Willingham, three and two. I don't know what's worse if you're the Pirates, lose 17 to three or blow a late lead. None of it's fun when you're losing. They cannot seem to beat Milwaukee. That game's not over yet. Ball four. That's the first time tonight, Bob. Josh Willingham hasn't flied out to right. <laughs> Three F9s on his card. He was in a rut. And he will be removed for a pinch runner as they will go for the uh, speed and the defense in the bottom of the ninth. Willie Tavares for Willingham. Rodriguez signed a two year deal prior to the season. I don't know if I've ever seen uh, Pudge with the uh, pant bottoms hiked up just below the knees. There may have been a few games throughout his career, but uh, most of the time he wears them right down on his shoe tops. Maybe that's the explanation for the over 400 batting average. Knock socks. Talking earlier about how do you slow down a team that runs as much as the Nationals do? This is a perfect uh, way to go about it with a base dealer on it first. Get ahead of the next hitter. That gives you the option of pitching out. Rodriguez goes down in a heap in that right handed batter's box trying to protect the plate, fouls it off to the right side. Now you jump ahead of that next hitter, 0 and 2. There's always a possibility you could pitch out and waste a pitch or two over the course of this at bat. That will slow down some base dealers over there at first base. A 
Hoiberg with just enough movement to keep that sinker off the barrel of Rodriguez's bat. He's gotten down near the trademark a couple times with lazy foul balls to the right side. Matter of fact, uh, even a wasted pitch out doesn't hurt anything against a team that likes to run a lot. At least it sends a message uh, that you will pitch out. Might not be a bad time to try one right here after a pickoff attempt at first base. Tavares likely to try to get an extra step on his lead over there at first. It comes with a high fastball running count to one and two. Maxwell, the right fielder on deck. Nationals tonight have scored early and late. Two in the first, one in the eighth. Up and in. Two and two. Usually when that count runs a two and two, you lose the threat of a pitch out. You don't want to go to a three and two count with Pudge Rodriguez at the plate, which would become an obvious run situation. So another opportunity perhaps for Tavares to get a jump and go. Swing and a miss. Tavares slipped as he took off. And it's a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Second guy, Gio has nailed tonight. They have stolen three, but have been caught twice. I'm surprised that Tavares kept running. He stumbled badly as he made his break over there at first base. You see him right there. And Gio puts the throw right on the money. They get him by a wide margin at second base. Good throw. He even slowed up a second time as he got close to the bag at second. Called strike on Maxwell. Well, that changes things. Sure does. We had a runner at first and a guy who was red hot to start the season at the plate. Nobody out, and all of a sudden, two outs, nobody on. Hit well to right. Pukadome reaches up and pulls it home. So we'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Soriano will lead off against Bat Caps 3-1. At Caps. 
And try to notch his ninth save in as many tries. Yeah, the six walks on the season and 11 and a third, an unusually high total for Matt Caps early in the season. Normally he is in the strike zone a lot. Caps coming up. A pretty bad year last year in his final season with the Pirates. He's trying to hide on us. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. The most Caps has walked in a season is 17. That was last year in over 54 innings. So, yeah, it's very uncharacteristic what he's done early on. But he's only given up one earned run, so it hasn't hurt him. Faced you know, the classic conundrum in the offseason, if you believe all the reports. At least one of his choices was to come to the Cubs and pitch in setup relief. Or go to Washington and be the closer. And the dilemma was on paper, you certainly would like the Cubs' chances a lot better than the Nationals, even though. In his current role, he has more responsibility. So he chose Washington and apparently turned down a second year as he strikes out Soriano. And so he'll take a shot at better dollars via free agency after what he hopes is a bounce back season. One away here in the night. Basically a fastball slider pitcher, but he can move that fastball all around the strike zone and out of the strike zone. Slider is very sharp and short and late breaking. <laughs> oh, and one. The Fontano singled his first time. He's flied out twice to center since. To that rocky season with the Pirates. An even rougher winner for Matt Caps as he lost his dad to a heart attack in October. They used to speak every day. His dad really helped him with his craft. Gave him constant feedback on his pitching. He field this one cleanly, run it halfway over to Dunn before flipping the rest of the way, and the Cubs are down to their final chance. Two outs, nobody on, and it's Giovanni Soto. He has worked a lot of walks lately. And the Cubs could sure use another here. Set it up for pinch hitter Tyler Colvin, who has jumped into the on deck circle. Now, Soto's been very patient at the plate uh, over the last eight or ten ball games, but against Matt Caps, this is one guy you probably should be a little more aggressive. He loves to go strike one. Geo ready to jump all over at that time. Not a lot of hits in this one. Each team was six. No home runs tonight. The Nationals got two first inning triples as they took a, an early lead. And they have not trailed all night. 0 and 2. Into right and down. Tying run coming up. Tyler Colvin will hit with Soto on. After his second hit. Good battling at bat by Giovanni Soto. That time Caps 
throwing too many strikes. That ball right down the middle of the plate ahead in the count. Gio will gladly take that line drive base hit into right field, setting it up for Tyler Colvin. So he bats for Justin Bird. And Soto's going to take second here as the Nationals don't care about him at all. up with frostbite but they're still here and they're excited. Again the wind has died down considerably barely doing anything at the moment. Swing and a miss as Soto takes second. No steal. Defensive indifference. The battle here down 0 2. Long pause by Caps, and Colvin asks for and is granted time at the last possible moment. Well, you better be ready to hit when you ask for time in that spot. Oh, yeah. And I think Caps does that by design on occasion. He'll stand out there and wait, wait, wait until that hitter kind of relaxes just a little bit and then deliver the pitch. Are. If Caps is going to give Tyler Colvin anything to hit in this at bat, it's going to be away from him. And the one thing that could hurt the Nationals right now is the long ball off the bat of Tyler Colvin. It's more likely to happen on a pitch from the middle of the plate in. Back to back heaters, about the same speed and about the same spot. on the way and he popped it foul out of play. Well, sitting with Tyler Colvin uh, at the uh, Cubs Care Luncheon today and the gentleman we were sitting with said uh, I have a question for you Tyler. When the game's on the line do you want to be at the plate? He said absolutely that's what every guy dreams about. And here we are. Here we are. Battle here. I mean, most closers, unless you're a guy like Carlos Marmol who has swing and miss kind of stuff, you're taught in a close ball game late with the tying or go ahead run at the plate, make them beat you to the opposite field. And so far, Caps has just stayed away, away, away from Tyler Colvin. To his credit, the youngster's been able to foul off a couple of borderline pitches to stay alive in this at bat and just hope that Matt Caps makes some kind of a mistake over the heart of the plate.
Good rip at that one. Yeah, that was the time. Him. That was supposed to be a backdoor slider and one of the rare mistakes we've seen in this outing from Matt Kapp. Watch where this pitch ends up. Inside and belt high. Good rip by the youngster. Fouls it straight back. He'd like to have that one back. It's been a seven pitch battle. Maybe. Now another 2-2, and that will do it. So Caps waited him out again. Colvin did not ask for time. And Caps strikes him out. The Cubs strand one. And he's perfect. Nine for nine. He saves it for LeVon Hernandez. And the Cubs' tough luck guy this year is Tom Gorzolani, who drops to 0-3. The final score, the Nationals 3, the Cubs 1.